Hello there everybody. I am creating a video today based on six foot social distancing. And is it safe enough? And we're gonna get into that here in a minute. And I just wanna first say like what you're gonna learn in this video, hopefully y'all find it educational and very helpful protect to, to protect you and your loved ones. So what you're gonna learn in this video is um, six foot social distancing. Is it enough? Where did six foot come from? And also, should it be more feet distancing? And we're also gonna learn about proper usage of masks, which seems to be a problem out there. And I'm gonna go through that real quick. Then I'm gonna give some tips and tricks on how to protect you, yourself, and your loved ones a little bit better than what we're doing today and a few other things too but first I want to explain what inspired me to create such a video like this and as weird as this sounds which weird stuff is pretty much normal for me and what inspired me to create this video is actually a little spider shooting a web I know you're probably think what the heck's a spider got to do with social distancing right well, stay tuned because I'm about to say that. So I'm going to jump into that now. Actually, before I jump into that, just real quick, it will be very helpful if you like, subscribe, and show that you care. Make sure you share this video to someone you think it would be helpful for. With that out of the way, okay, I'm going to get into what inspired me. Like I said, the spider. So in Mother Nature, a spider... A little, little spider can actually shoot a web 80 foot in distance, over 80 foot in distance. How does a spider accomplish such a thing? Well, it's not because the spider is strong enough, it's because a spider is smart enough. And what a spider does, it shoots the web into a breeze. And the breeze, and because the web is so small and light, that breeze will actually carry that web over 80 foot in distance. So basically, the spider web is riding the wind, kind of like a surfer riding the ocean waves. The water carries the surfer while the wind carries the spider web. And when I seen this to be true, which it is, you could look it up or whatever, this is factional, I thought to myself, well, if a spider web can ride the wind in such a way and achieve 80 feet in distance, what about something a thousand times smaller and lighter and yes I'm talking about COVID-19 if a spider web can ride the wind can COVID-19 from someone sneezing or coughing can a COVID-19 in the smaller droplets can that ride the wind as well and reach distances at 80 feet and if so can it go further than 80 foot because it is a thousand times smaller and lighter somewhere around there and I did some research and what I, the information I came across to the answer to that is actually yes. COVID-19 from one single sneeze can travel over 80 feet. Actually, recent studies show that COVID-19 from a single sneeze can actually travel somewhere around 200 feet. That's a scary thought. And there is some word out there that it may or may not even travel up to a mile not saying you could get sick from someone sneezing a mile away but it is something definitely to consider if you want to do the safest things as possible but i'm not going to base this video on the one mile mark or even the 200 mark i'm going to base this video pretty much on the 25 foot mark it's more like over 25. Now, the question is, is six foot distancing safe enough? Is six foot safe? And I actually came up with a mathematical mathematical equation for to answer this. Let me The mathematical equation is this. Hail to the mother freaking O. Oh. In other words, hell to the mother Freaking no, it's not safe enough. It's not safe enough. So what is the proper and safer distance? Me personally, I really don't know, but I would have to say over 12 feet because when somebody does a heavy cough or a sneeze, 
With a mask on, it can travel over 12 feet. To accomplish that distance, um, it takes a few minutes. But without a mask on, when somebody sneezes or does a heavy cough, it's a lot worse than you actually think. I mean, if our eyes were made out of microscopes, you would be so amazed what's right in front of your face, but yet you cannot see it because our eyes are not made out of a microscope. It would be pretty damn cool though, I think. But, so what would you see if your eyes were made out of a microscope? Let's say if someone sneezed without a mask on and we'll say a grocery store or a school. We'll stick with the grocery store right now. You know what you'll see? I'm about to show you. Watch this video. This is basically what happens when somebody sneezes, but remember, it's without a mask on. And also pay good attention to the timeline at top because it does take time for these smaller droplets to travel along the way. So watch this video and let's talk. Now, after watching that video, I know what you're thinking. There's no way anyone can sneeze or cough that much stuff out of their mouth. But the truth is that video is only a computer simulation, but it's pretty damn accurate. I mean, that's kind of like being in a basement full of potheads smoking some dope, right? You're in a cloud of smoke and you're going to breathe that into your lungs. And if you do that with COVID-19, like the video, an owl, maybe even two owls over, you're at risk. And plus, if someone in that one owl sneezes and they walk away five minutes later and you walk in that owl and you decide to take your mask off for a little breather because nobody's around, nobody's looking. Look, I ain't going to lie. I did it so many times before in a Walmart, okay? But I'm not going to do it no more, not after watching that video. Oh, hell no. But every once in a while, I want to take a breather. But I walk there five minutes later, there's still those little molecules, those little possible COVID-19 droplets just floating around. I could be breathing that shit in. So that's something to definitely consider. So I would say anytime you're in a store and you got your mask on, don't lift the mask to breathe. You know what I mean? It's So how can we prevent from a cough or sneeze? Because nobody really wants to cough in their mask. That's disgusting. Oh, my God. OMG. But... Yeah, so if you must take your mask off, I think the best way, they say not to um, cough in your elbow. I hadn't done much research on that, but I think the best way to cough or sneeze, if you must take your mask off, even with your mask on, just one of these. <coughs> God, that cough was fake as hell, wasn't it? But that's probably the best thing to do um, just to like respect others and you know be thoughtful of others because you don't want someone walking up in your cloud of cough that you coughed out five minutes ago because like i said in the video just make sure if you need to watch that video again go ahead and rewind and pay like i said pay close attention to the timeline at top it took six minutes for that cloud to basically disappear and but even at the end of the video after six minutes it's still lingering around just a little bit but it only takes a little bit it takes one inhale of that stuff and you, you could be screwed just saying. So, like, one of the best things you could do is put your mask on, go into the store, get what you need as quick as you can, and get the hell on out of there because you don't want to be hanging around, dilly-dallying, stuff like that. Get what you need, get on out, and pretty much it, you know? Okay, Stock up on next. Some stuff. Okay. I want to talk about the proper wearing of a mask. I see that this is a big problem out there. Um, I notice a lot of people, and I'm sure they don't know any better than this because nobody really has time to educate themselves on these things. Me, on the other hand, I'm here making a YouTube video. I have plenty of time on my hands to do this. Let me do the research for you, I guess. Whatever. But, um... 
I noticed that a lot of people, they will wear the mask over their mouth, but they won't wear it over their nose. Now, if you wear a mask over your mouth, but not over your nose, you're defeating the whole purpose of wearing a mask at all, because that would be like walking into a store, keeping your mouth shut, but breathing through your nose. It's the same thing as wearing a mask over your mouth and not your nose. We got to try just a little harder, just move that mask up about an inch or two and make sure your nose is covered. And I'm telling you this for your own safety, okay? Because COVID-19 wants to do one thing. It wants to reach your lungs. And the two best ways to get in your lungs is through your mouth as much as your nose. So make sure you cover your nose. Because if you don't, you put in yourself and others at risk. And like I said, be respectful and thoughtful of others. Just pull it up an inch or two and cover your nose, please. I ask you kindly. Um, I mean, don't take my word for it, but take it from... Take it from somewhat of a professional. Here, watch this video. Some people are getting mustache and some on, but we have to do all we can to avoid it becoming fashionable. Will our chin diapers keep us safe? Yes, but we must wear them where the mustache would be. We need to wear them over our mouths and nose. Are you out of your mind? You expect people to wear a diaper over their nose. That's disgusting. Fuck you, Fauci. Well, there you have it. Spoken by somewhat of a professional, right? I mean, yes. So wear the mask over your nose as much as over your mouth. That's the only way the mask is going to protect you to its full potential. But some masks are better than others. And there's no one mask that's going to protect you 100%. But masks help keep you safe dramatically for the better. So please properly wear your mask and you're actually supposed to seal it around your face the best you can. I know you're not gonna get a 100% seal. I mean, the only way to do that is to go out and buy a space suit or a biohazard suit. But I mean, with the stimulus money being held back and procrastinated, I feel on purpose sometimes, you probably can't can barely afford a bandana out there, which only costs a dollar to Dollar Tree, by the way. But if you're cheap and you only have a dollar to your name or a dollar six, I should say, can't forget about tax, go to Dollar Tree and buy at minimum a bandana. But I do highly recommend getting something better than that, surgical masks. And also, if you have asthma and you are the type to refuse to wear a mask because you have asthma, believe me. If you don't wear a mask and you have asthma and you don't wear a mask because of asthma and you get infected by COVID-19, asthma is going to be the least of your concern because you're going to be dealing with COVID-19. And if you have asthma, you are at high risk for dying from such a disease. I have asthma and I still wear my mask. I wear a heavy duty mask. And if you do have asthma, I would recommend wear a surgical, like a doctor's mask of some sort, because they're more breathable than some masks, you know. So, yeah, if you're worried, if you don't want to wear a mask because asthma, believe me, asthma is the least of your worries if you get the COVID-19. You think your asthma is bad now? Get the COVID-19. It's going to be so much more worse. And I don't want that to happen to anybody. And that's why I'm sharing this information with you. Just being truthful. I research this stuff so I know what I'm talking about. And I hope you all agree with me on this. So please. And besides, you don't want to walk into the store and be one of those people where everybody else wearing a mask who's anal about the stuff. Saying, oh my God, I can't believe they're wearing a mask. And it's like, wear a mask, be respectful for others. Because ain't nobody want to be breathing in your recycled secondhand air that you exhale nobody wants that be respectful and thoughtful for others wear a mask like i said get in get out take the mask off you're good once you're outside not really but you know at least when you're in a store wear a mask and even if you got asthma if you don't if you have asthma that bad which i have bad asthma if you have asthma that bad you probably shouldn't leave home to be honest and i'm just saying that to keep you safe Okay, now let's talk about the 25 foot mark. Um, let's say, for example, you're in a setting like a work environment setting or hey, how about a classroom like a school? Okay, and somebody coughs or sneezes 
without a mask on, it's in a calm area without the breeze blowing or any wind or whatever, not even a single draft. It's going to travel. A cough is going to travel. Without a mask on, a cough is going to travel about over 25 feet easily. And without a mask on, it could also achieve those distances, but it'll just take a lot longer, probably about like 20, 30 minutes for a cough with a mask on to achieve about 25 feet, something like that. Um, I'm not very accurate on that with the mask on, but without a mask, you're definitely gonna go uh, 25 feet in about within five minutes if you cough without a mask on. So let me show you like a little example if uh, somebody coughs in a classroom setting. So yeah, let me show you. We modeled a number of scenarios trying to decide how Holt Architects would return to the office. Staff wanted to know if they'd be allowed to remove their masks when seated at their workstations. And for that reason, our first model represents an unmasked person coughing three times in about a 10 minute period. You should note that anywhere from light blue to red represents the HID 50 or human infectious dose for COVID-19. And red is five times the human infectious dose. Notice that a cloud carrying a dosage five times that HID 50 is carried 30 feet across the studio. And a normal infectious dose can travel more than 50 feet indoors. Finally, notice that the cloud of virus never reaches the mechanical system where filters could be effective. The first model gave us absolute clarity when deciding that all of our staff would be required to wear masks at all times unless in a single occupancy space with the door closed. Our next step was to determine under what other terms would we occupy our office even with a mask mandate. We'll show you in our next video why six feet of distance in a mask may not be enough when wow. indoors. That video if was have... just crazy. For someone coughing three times in a 10 minute period, all that happened. And as you notice, the ventilation system was not doing too good of a job. Can you imagine if they was to like open the schools back up and you got 20 kids in a classroom like that and somebody coughs? Can you imagine what would happen? Wait, what? They open the schools back up? Bullshit. And you wonder why this pandemic is spiraling out of control. Why would they open the schools up? Okay, so I just gotta say about this. What has changed since the time they shut the schools down because of the pandemic to the point, let's just say up to today? What has changed where they came to the conclusion to open the schools back up. Um, so I thought about this and I, um, I did some research and I actually found pretty much nothing other than a money situation, but this video has nothing to do with money and I'm not even gonna go there, but pretty much nothing changed ever since they shut the schools down up until now, other than the fact that um, infection and death rates were there. But though they were lowered, maybe it had something to do with shutting the school down. But I noticed if you go on the COVID-19 app, the infection and death rates actually climbed ever since the schools were open. So I'm thinking I'm putting two to two together and I'm coming out with four, maybe four and a half. I don't know. But I'm putting two to two together and I'm seeing that maybe the opening of the schools may have a little something to do with why this pandemic is going out of control, you know? So I just thought I'd bring that to the attention. So I wanted to display that video because um, to shine some light on what's actually going on in the world that you cannot see. I'm talking about the microscopic world. That's where COVID-19 lives. Like I said earlier, our eyes are not made out of a microscope. Wish they were, because we would do a lot better job what we're doing now, but, um, and it, I think it's kind of messed up because if the government actually allows the schools to open up, which they already did, um, that would give people who actually look up to the government and trust the government, okay? That would give people like a false thought of safety and security. So if I'm just a normal person who trusts the government, and I'm like, wow, if the government's going to allow the schools to open back up, then it must be at least a little safer to um open the schools back up and let my kids in there 
And the fact is, that's, that's a false feeling of safety because we rely on the government for s such things. But the truth is, it's not safe to open the schools back up. And, um, and I'm saying this based on the information I know about quantum mechanics and the microscopic world and logic and a little bit of common sense. That's why I'm saying, I always said before they even opened the schools, when they was actually considering, I said that is not a good idea. No good can come from letting kids go back to school in the middle of a pandemic. Like, seriously, like, come on. I said, I mean, come on. But don't get me wrong. Please don't be mad for me saying that because I know some people just want their kids to go to school because, I mean, summer's enough to have your kid 24-7 and you're probably ripping your hairs out. That's why I shaved my head. I'm due for another haircut. But I understand that. But if you feel that it's safe for kids to be in school, that's simply not true. But I'm not here to say put your kid in school or pull them out. That's not what I'm about, okay? That's up to you, your decision, your family, your life. All I'm trying to do here, because I do not want to offend anybody, I'm just putting out, I'm just trying to um, shine some light on the things that are overlooked, and I'm trying to educate everyone. So with watching and learning this information, in case you didn't know it, and I'm shining a little more light on it, um, take this information, and then, you know, hopefully it's a learning experience. And that you can make your own decision, whether to put your kid in school or pull them out. Whatever you want to do, that's up to you. Um, I'm not with it. I'm not without it. it. It doesn't matter to me. But I'm just trying to shine some light on the actual dangers of not just kids in a little classroom, but also like work environment or any kind of indoor thing. Like they said, it could go 50 feet easily indoors and ventilation systems even the greatest ones out there they don't get it all and according to the video i just played if you think someone okay now that was based on without a mask but if someone coughed with a mask on let's just say the mask will filter out 90 percent of that if you're in that classroom or work environment if you're in a room like that um even if 90 percent of that cough is filtered out 10% of what you've seen in the previous video is still being put in high, very high risk, I would say. Even just 10% of what you've seen on that video is very highly dangerous. And you know what? The scientists who actually study these, like study it for a living, they have warned the higher officials about that and um, that no good can come from this and that we need to do something about it. And the higher officials kind of just ignored the scientists who knew exactly what they was talking about. So the scientists can safely say, I told you so. And, and they have every right to because they have warned us about this, but their warnings were ignored. And now look where we're at, spiraling out of control. Did you know that the infection rate on a daily basis in the US is 185,000 people per day getting infected by the COVID-19. That's not good. We may have had this situation under control a little bit back when everything was closed down and stuff like that and schools were out, blah, 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 whatever. We may have had a better control of it, but as you noticed, just like a normal person, especially me, when we get things somewhat under control, we, even myself, tend to let our guards down a little bit. And that's what we did. When we let our guards down, Things got worse, and now we're to the point where it is out of control beyond our control. And they're talking about doing lockdowns and stuff like that. Look, I ain't with no lockdown. I ain't trying to be locked down, but I'm not against it either. I mean, we kind of let our guard down to the point where things got so much out of control where I'm the only solution I could find to even have a chance to get this thing under control, this pandemic under control. I hate to admit it, I hate to say it, but just using common sense and simple logic, a lockdown may be the only choice we have in order to at least to have any chance at all to get this situation under control. I, I, I'm not, like I said, I am not with a lockdown, but I'm not against it. It is a very um, common sense solution that can help us 
for the better. I don't want to be locked down, but I think because we left our guard down, we pretty much don't have much of a choice. I don't know. That's just an opinion, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Don't hold that against me, but I'm just saying. I ain't with the lockdown, but I think it's necessary. That's my opinion, but I don't vote, so my, so my, so my opinion don't count, right? Thank God I don't vote. Anyway, all right, so all, oh, I forgot. I'll just play it safe. Anyway, so all that being said, I'm going to put this whole video pretty much in a nutshell. So basically, you want to properly wear your mask, not like this, but like that, over your nose. That's very important. And then, um, hmm, let's see, social distancing, you want to do at least six foot, but at minimum 12 feet, at least six foot minimum 12 feet that don't make sense but just stay your distance as far as you can so you know six foot is not safe enough but it is better than nothing than no feet at all then you want to wash your hands a lot whenever you feel necessary just you know do the best you can oh and um i would highly recommend carrying like a little bottle of hand sanitizer with you especially when you go out and shopping because you don't know what you put your hands on when you go into a store so i would recommend before getting in your vehicle when you're done shopping you put just a little dab in your hand because when you enter your vehicle and you don't use hand sanitizer anything you touch in that vehicle especially who knows what you're touching in the store and if you have covid on your hand you're spreading it throughout your vehicle your steering wheel, your gear shifter, and your radio when you're jamming down a road. If you're like me, I'll do that shit. But uh, yeah, just a little dab helps. It, it definitely helps uh, prevent spreading it in your own vehicle. Then the hard part here is anything you buy in the store. Remember the video when someone coughed in a grocery store at the, toward the beginning of this video? Well, when they cough, those little droplets have to land somewhere and it's more than likely going to land on the products you are actually buying at the store and that just don't disappear like magic i wish it did but you got to think of it when you come home from the store after grocery shopping what i highly recommend i don't do this myself and if i get infected because i don't do this then that i have myself to blame because i know this and i still don't do it because it's just a lot of work what you should do and i know one person that does it and she's very very smart but you should wipe down every product you buy from a grocery store because you don't know who touched it, where they were, and you don't know who coughed on it. That's something definitely to consider and think about when you unload your groceries at home. Because when somebody asks me how easy it is to get COVID-19, I always tell them, easier than it is to pour yourself a glass of milk in your very own home. And with that being said, that is very much true. I'm actually going to do a glow germ demonstration sooner or later based on that. But um, I don't know. I'll tell you what. Leave it in the comments. Should I do my glow germ experiment? So if I get 10 people to say do the glow germ experiment, I will do it. I will, boom, jump right on it. Other than that, if I don't get 10 people, then I'm just going to um, just do it whenever I get around to it. I have so many other things I want to do. But definitely consider that when you bring products home from the store and always make sure that when you wear if you if you're a store jumper like your window shopping or something if you go up in one store and you take your mask off when you get in your vehicle hopefully after you sanitize your hands and you go to a second store make sure you always put your mask on the right way because if you was in the first store and you walk through a cloud of covid your mask is more hopefully going to filter it out but if you take that mask off and you go to another store and you put that mask on backwards, you're basically putting COVID that's stuck in the fabrics of your mask right up against your skin if you put that on backwards. But when you have a bandana as a mask, that's kind of hard to tell what's front side, what's back side. And a good way to do that is just put a Mr. Yuck sticker on front of your mask so you always know where your front of your mask is. And wash your masks um, when you feel you need to and do you know, throw them out and get a new one if you must do whatever you can i know it seems like a lot of work but then you got to ask yourself how much work is too much based on like it, it, how much work you want to do depends on how you want to 
how much you want to protect you and your loved ones. So just try the best you can. Nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. I know I do. Damn, do I. There's way too many mistakes I make. But I just want to say, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much all about that. So um, now with all that being said, I just want to say before I go that if I said anything like my opinions or anything like that, if I said anything to offend anybody, I just want to truly apologize ahead of time because my intention is not to express my opinions on here. This is basically I made this video so I could bring out the simple overlooked things I could bring it out into light shine some light on things of the reality and the seriousness of the pandemic that's going on so I'm hoping this video makes it to the right people who would find this video to be helpful so you could come up with ways better ways that no one even thought of to help better protect yourself and the loved ones and um so this is supposed to be an educational video pandemic is a very um serious thing and i know i throw some jokes and stuff like that up in here but the reason why i do that is because pandemic is a downer and i don't want to be a negative nancy so i throw a little humor in there just to lift your spirits a little bit in 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 a serious situation like this you know so trying to stay on the positive side it helps me so i hope it helps you that's why i do the humor plus i'm a goof goofy individual on a normal daily basis but uh anyway i hope this video is uh helpful i hope y'all found it educational and if for any reason that you find the information that i share that i say is fact if you find any information invalid or incorrect please let me know in the comments below because um uh the last thing i want to do is give false information out there i do try the best i can to make sure my information is true and correct and based on fact but i am human and i do make mistakes and uh if i if you do catch me making a mistake on anything i say based on fact please let me know in the comments i'm very humble with the information i research and i want to make sure that I give out the right information and if you do discover I made a mistake please let me know so I could go back and correct it because if I'm not told I'm wrong I, I can't learn anything I got to leave it up to you to correct me where I am wrong that way I can learn and um, with that being said I'm going to move along and end this video move along sir I just want to remind y'all that if um, if y'all like this video and you got something out of it, please go ahead and hit that like button. It will be greatly appreciated. If you want to see my new upcoming videos, go ahead and subscribe. That would be appreciated too. And don't forget, show that you care. Make sure you share this video with whoever because you never know. It might depend on someone's life. So, um... Speaking of coughs and this video being on coughs and sneezing, I just got to say before I go that I know you didn't sneeze, but God bless you anyway.